Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome back to another Game of Thrones Season 8 video. And this time I want to discuss the buzz going around about this spiral symbol again that we saw in Episode 1 where Beric stabbed young Ned Umber after he turned into a white where he was pinned up on the wall here as we saw the same spiral symbol we've seen many, many times in the show. It obviously represents where the Night King was created. Now obviously this is just his calling card, but I think this actually supports my old theory about how this thing's going to end and Beric just may have unknowingly showed us exactly what's got to happen to kill the Night King. So I'm sure there are a lot of great videos out there and articles, etc., trying to decipher what the hell this possibly meant. Why would the Night King leave another symbol behind when he's already done it several times? And why now after the invasion's already begun? So I want to go back to an old series I did called A Dragon Raised by Wolves that started way back in 2016, and we finally wrapped that series up with Part 5 somewhere around the end of 2017. But I want to give a quick little abridged version here because I believe this is more evidence to actually support how Game of Thrones is going to end. So I will leave the links in the description below to that series, but specifically watch part five, where we go over these details in depth and how we arrived at this conclusion. But essentially what we talk about is how the Isle of Faces is the key to destroy the Night King. Very early on in A Game of Thrones, the first book, the Isle of Faces and God's Eye are mentioned several times in early chapters of our main characters. For example, Danny has never seen Westeros, but she mentions all these places she would like to see that Viserys told her about, and the God's Eye and Isle of Faces is one of them. John also thinks about places he will never see once he decides to join the Night's Watch, and specifically thinks about the Isle of Faces. As well as Bran in Chapter 7 in A Game of Thrones when he's talking about the Order of the Green Men and their strange magic powers, then we go from there to associate the Order of the Green Men and how they're described to the White Walkers that start off in the prologue of our story. And the green men are described with the word silent, as in their silent watch. So then I was able to connect the White Walkers with the Order of the Green Men or the Isle of Faces because they are also described many times in the prologue of Game of Thrones as silent. For example, they move on silent feet. And I give many more examples in that original video of how this is established and how George R. R. Martin uses this word to kind of link the White Walkers in the prologue to the green men at the Isle of Faces. But obviously in Game of Thrones Season 8, we're coming to the end game here as far as what's got to be done to destroy the Night King. We also established in that video the idea of a heart tree and what that really means. Now, of course, we kind of take it as the central location in a God's Wood, which is, of course, in context as far as the characters and what they think and say is exactly what they're thinking about. It's kind of the central location. But it also comes along with this circular imagery as we see in the show as well. And the heart is generally associated with the center of something. Therefore, the word heart tree takes on a whole new meaning. Now, of course, the spiral patterns we see on the show simply represents where the Night King was created. But if you remember when we saw his creation, at the very center of that symbol is the weirwood tree itself. And the rocks form the spiral arms around it. And of course, all this happened in Bran's vision when he was with Bloodraven. You saw it was kind of spring. The Night King before he was turned was tied to a weirwood tree. So in the show, Bran goes back to the same location by himself later and sees the same place, this time covered in snow, where he sees the army of the dead and the Night King actually marks his arm. Also, we mentioned that Davos kind of sets up the idea that Melisandre is actually on the right path. She just doesn't know it yet and doesn't know exactly what it means. Davos mentions Melisandre burning the heart tree because, of course, she was telling Stannis that he was Azor Ahai, the prince that was promised, and as part of her religion, any other religion, including the old gods, are simply blasphemy to her, and she actually urges and has Stannis burn the weirwood tree at Storm's End. Also in the books, Melisandre straight up tells Jon to burn weirwoods because she says a vow to a tree has no more power than a vow to your shoes. And this is when Stannis was offering Jon to become Jon Stark, the Lord of Winterfell. And then we had a dance with dragons. Melisandre has the wildlings burn weirwood branches as well. And this is specifically brought up to Jon when he is Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. And in that same book, A Dance with Dragons, and Mel's only chapter so far in the book series, she actually sees Bloodraven and Bran and aligns them with the Great Other. So essentially the conclusion I came to was the weirwoods at the Isle of Faces need to burn in order to destroy the Night King. I believe that the Isle of Faces and the trees there are essentially the heart or source of all magic in Westeros, and that's why the Green Men are there to protect him in the first place. And of course, remember what Stannis' new sigil is once Melisandre gets in his head. It is a burning heart. So again, in summary, I believe to kill the Night King, 
you have to destroy the magic that created and sustains him and to do that you need to burn down the werewoods at the Isle of Faces. In other words, you need to burn the heart of magic in Westeros. Now what do I mean by that as far as the show goes in Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 1 with Little Ned Umber and the burning spiral symbol on the wall? Well of course the spiral symbols again are a calling card from the Night King essentially telling us what they need to do. They need to go to the center and of course we see Beric actually stab the center of this symbol representing the heart where the heart tree actually was where he was created. When little Ned Umber turned to a white he stabbed that heart essentially and caught the whole damn thing on fire. Then they gave us a good long shot of the whole entire symbol catching fire and burning as in the Owl of Faces. So I believe they essentially told us symbolically with Beric stabbing that flaming sword into the heart of that symbol kind of tells us what needs to be done in a very symbolic way. So anyway guys, let me know what you think in the comments below and again, watch that video for more detailed descriptions and actual book quotes, etc. about what I'm talking about. It does fit fairly well and I think this is a way they could do it in the show. Although the God's Eye has not been set up in the show, Tywin did technically mention the God's Eye Lake in season two but all the symbolism could still work, and of course we could still have time to get the God's Eye or the Isle of Faces set up in a brand vision, but they could also do it differently in the show, and maybe it's just the heart tree at Winterfell or a certain tree, or maybe even the same exact tree that he was created at in the show, so essentially you could have the same ending in the books or show as far as the weirwoods being destroyed, the source of magic that created him and sustains him in the first place. Anyway guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think this little symbol where Beric stabbed little Ned Umber kind of told us what's going to happen in the end of the series in order for the living to win this war at a great cost by destroying all magic in Westeros? And as usual, thank you for all the support, especially you guys on Patreon. And a huge shout out to my executive Patreon smokescreen producers. And if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and share. And of course, be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.